Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief at Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over to Amcor with George Harris. We're going to talk today about the challenges of testing advanced packages. George, everything seems to be moving to advanced packaging these days, but it's getting a lot more complicated to test this than it was a simple chip, right? What sort of challenges are you facing? Quite a few. You have to consider the package itself, how to handle that particular package. So in advanced packages, uh, you know, in old packages, we used to be contacting on one side of the package. Nowadays, we could be contacting electrically on all sides of the package. You know, all eight sides of the package could have contacts some way or another. So that's uh, quite a bit of challenge for the interface hardware, like the contactors. It's quite a bit of challenge uh, for maintaining the uh, handler. Um, some of the products, especially in advanced packaging, are much larger and heavier than every force. So the force is much different. And um, being able to make sure we don't bend the package or deform the package under test, these are all some critical pieces just from the handling perspective. Then when we talk about heterogeneous integration, we'll have all these different functions within a, within a chip. The question is, you know, how do you have observability and the ability to stimulate a chip that's behind a chip? Uh, so you can talk to the chip in front, but you may not have access to uh, put a stimulus or even read the result from a chip that's fully deeply embedded. Same sort of problem we had long ago when we started on the advent of SOCs. What, what's the IP that's going to be in the middle of the chip? How do we get there? Do we have routing? Do we have designed for tests in there. Now, same sort of problem, but at the system and package for, uh, area. Um, so lots of different ways. And then the thermal conditions, uh, both from the handling and then what you do under test. We could probably exercise that particular chip far more than it will be in the actual application. Uh, we could be sending more stimulus, higher voltages, more currents, uh, just to get really fast throughput and lower cost of test. But the chip will heat up quite a bit and will need to be cooled. Um, so there's challenges there. Uh, nowadays, a lot of the chips uh, need to be tested um, cross temperatures. Uh, and not just uh, having the coverage of what we do on our ATE, um, but we have what's called an SLT now, that uh, another insertion does SLT. Let's take a closer look at just how complicated this can get. Sure. George, what are we looking at? So we think about it. Originally, we had maybe, in this particular example, four chips. So product one, product two, product three, and product four. Call them discrete chips. And they're all going through a wafer fab uh, in wafers. One of them might be on a 300 millimeter wafer. Another one might be on a 200 millimeter wafer. Another one might even be on a gallium marcinide wafer. And they're making their way through the factory. And there are certain tests that the factory will do in line, maybe some scribe line testing. Uh, then they'll go into uh, wafer sort and get some testing there. And the test um, list will be uh, tailored to what that product needs. And then what's going to happen downstream? So then those discrete parts will go into an assembly and test factory, and they'll get packaging and then start their test um, journey at that point. They might get a package test. They might, you can see here, uh, they might get a burn-in test. They get a post-burn-in test to see if anything fails during burn-in. Uh, and they might have a system-level test on them. Uh, and then they go off to the EMS. They might have some flying probe that comes in and checks to make sure that they've been placed and soldered correctly, and then maybe some more system-level tests. These are when they're discrete products. So you can see any kind of variation might actually occur. Well, if we take the example where three of these chips are now embedded into one package, that whole process, that whole test journey has to be um, studied again. It's possible that chip number two is behind chip number one and three, and you don't have any observability. You can't get into it. Here, that chip might be getting a voltage or current stress to uh, weed out some defects, but how are you going to do that when it's embedded? Do you have access to get in there? Because chip one and three may not be able to handle those voltages for stress, example. 
Does it get harder as you start getting all these designs that are very customized? You think about packages, a lot of these are truly unique versus something else that was done before. Much more difficult. In this particular case, you know, you might have these chips uh, from uh, individual, all different companies, and they're all doing what they think they need to do to make that chip high quality, good performance. When it gets into the system and package, there might be some design for tests that the system and package integrator doesn't know about. So um, how is that chip going to get tested when that IP, though that secret sauce, is really uh, back at the person who uh, sold you that chip? They don't want to give up their secret sauce and tell you how it needs to be tested when you've integrated it. So that's a big challenge. So partnership, collaboration between competitors in some cases and also uh, end customers and uh, suppliers is much more uh, important nowadays to communicate um, how the chips work and what they can do together and how they're going to be tested and what that flow needs to look like moving forward. So it's not just one company or, or one person working here. Now you have to share data all the way down the line, right? That's right. You have to hear, share data, specs, and then techniques that, like I said, might be IP, might be secret sauce that uh, uh, a vendor doesn't want to give up to the end customer or the um, assembly and test factory that might be doing the test or even a test vendor who might be right in the program or the system level. In the past, all that people were looking for a lot of times was, is this a known good die going into a package? Now it's, it's more than that, right? It's much more than that. So the die might be known good. Uh, however, does it work with the rest of the system? So when we talk about known good die, <clears throat> you can have a Venn diagram, all the different techniques that we use to ensure that the product is known good for some space. When you get into a uh, system level, when you get into putting it into a SIP with system, how well does it work with the other parts? Um, then we have to go and add maybe a system level test in order to get full coverage, make sure uh, that the whole system is going to work together um, as you get chip variations out. In the past when I thought about testing for uh, packages, it was pretty much known good die that was really all that you had to worry about. That's changed now, right? Quite a, quite a bit it's changed. So previously we have known good die. We've done all these test lists to make sure that 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 die is known good going into the package. Once it gets in the package now, we have a lot of different interactions that we have to test. So SLT becomes much more important uh, to make sure those interactions across process corners, across chip variations uh, actually work. And the second thing is the, the level of interconnect that is in there, the chip might be known good, but now you have manufacturing defects that you have to handle. Uh, so that second order effect uh, previously now becomes a first order effect. And then trying to debug what's happening in there. It's known good die. All the interconnect now is a problem. Trying to figure that out is a challenge uh, to drive higher and higher yields for lower and lower costs. And also known good die, but not necessarily the same process node, right? I mean, these are very heterogeneous now, too. That's correct. So as I showed in this example, we might have almost all of these chips might come from completely different processes. Gallium arsenide might be uh, SO, uh, SOI, might be uh, an older um, silicon process for by CMOS. All different kinds are tailored to make those chips you know, more efficient, lower cost to put together. Do the insertion points change now, too? The insertion points do change. So uh, previously, we had you know, uh, all of these um, devices might see these uh, different variation of insertion points. So as we move forward, um, a chip that didn't see that insertion point is now being carried in a package that needs to see that insertion point. So we have to make sure that we consider that moving forward. So uh, when we're stressing or doing burn-in uh, or lifetime test on uh, the system and package, how much lifetime does that take off of the discrete that maybe isn't, had already done it previously when it was being manufactured 
uh, by the uh, wafer fab. So these things have to be taken into consideration um, so we can have uh, a good you know, design of insertion points. A lot of times in the past we take a sample of whatever was being manufactured and that was good enough. But as these devices start finding their way into safety critical, mission critical applications, there's much more concern about reliability. Does tests now take longer than it did in the past and is there any way to reduce that time? You can say test has been taken longer and there's really two answers to that question. One is, well, it's great. Now all these chips are in one package. I can insert them, handle them all with one tester. That's, that's actually some efficiency built in there. In, in other cases, a chip that used to get, uh, that didn't get a burn before is going to get a burn in now. So in some, in some cases, uh, you're getting more testing or uh, a longer test for that. So you have both of those two situations occurring. Another thing that's changed is that we're doing a lot more with sensors than they were, we were in the past, too. Does, there's not just one type of sensor. There's lots of different types of sensors. How does that affect what's going on with tests? Sensors are, are uh, exciting, for sure. Um, the great thing about sensors are we need them, they're growing, um, and there's all different kinds of sensors, and we all want them integrated more and more. The bad thing about it is there's really not very many industry standard solutions. So on memory tests, it's pretty industry standard. People know how to do memory tests. Uh, linear regulator, people know how to test a re linear regulator. For all the different kinds of sensors, the, the environmental chamber, especially for environmental sensors like temperature, humidity, uh, those, are, um, those environmental chambers are very different um, and can be are very challenging, especially when you want to do it in high volume. So that means you want to do it in high parallelism. You want to start doing 250 chips in parallel in a chamber. You have to get the humidity or the pressure or the temperature the same and calibrate it across all those chips all in the same time to get them all out, right? I don't want my pizza crust burnt here and then uh, soupy on the other side of the, of, uh, of the plate. So that is a super big challenge. And then what are you going to do when you've got more than one sensor in a package? So now you have to have a chamber that's able to do the temperature and the humidity or the temperature, the humidity and the pressure. And of course, as our performance specs get more and more uh, advanced, we have to have higher and higher resolution across wider and wider. It's a fun game, and you can see we can go on and on. But those challenges are there for the industry to try and get uh, higher throughput uh, at lower cost to drive the integration that's happening, that exciting integration that's happening uh, in that area with advanced packaging. So putting the sensors and all these compute functions all in the same package. It's, gonna, it's an exciting world moving forward. There's a big push on right now for analytics and a lot of different things. Does that apply to test as well? Absolutely. So if we look at this particular example, um, here you, each of these individual points were taking uh, analytics and trying to feed them back. It was far easier when uh, it was being done in the same company. But now we just show that we have different companies coming in, different wafer fabs in different parts of the world. Uh, and different test insertions. So now, uh, compute um, and decision making needs to either you know, be shared. All these little databases, you know, how much can you share with uh, your vendor? How much are you going to share with what, someone who may be a competitor of yours uh, moving up forward? So at least from the architecture perspective, the data becomes so massive nowadays, you have, to, you have to design how you're going to do the data center. So are you going to do everything up in the cloud? Are you going to do it on the data center in your own uh, building? Are you going to do it at the edge? Are you going to do it with an extra computer right next to your tester because the tester computer can't keep up? Or are you going to do it with the tester computer? How quickly do you need to make a decision? When you're testing a die, do you need to make a decision while you're testing the die? Or can you wait uh, for two days to process the data and look at the whole space, then make a decision on the die? These are the interesting data analytics questions uh, that we have moving forward. That's feed forward and feedback information. You're also now looking at uh, breaking down some of the silos of where that data gets uh, distributed, right? That's right. So. 
uh, how can we collaborate? So, for example, um, let's say that I am a fabulous semiconductor company, and I'm buying the same product, but from two different wafer fabs, two different, uh, they're both competitors. How much do I share with them? Do I basically control the data and feed them back what I want? Um, I don't want the two competitors to be able to see each other's data, so that has to be uh, considered. And then same with those two competitors. They're taking some data to manage their own line, so how much of that are they feeding forward and allowing the customer to see uh, so those trade-offs and those interactions and that partnership uh, and those relationships are really uh, required now. Uh, they're not optional. They're required to be successful uh, to drive yield and performance and product development moving forward. One of the hardest areas to test is in the, in the realm of 5G and 6G. For one thing, you don't always know necessarily what you're testing, right? This is all brand new. How does that apply in terms of what you're working with? Well, um, you know, nowadays we have something called over-the-air testing, right? So we're unable to get the signals uh, actually on the board. So we have to transmit them over the air. So that's not very much of that being done in production today. So people will use structural tests and maybe lower performance tests to try and guarantee by design that that's going to work. But moving forward, these challenges of um, uh, over the over the air testing are where uh, the industry is moving. So we'll see how that works in the future. And the challenges are really really difficult because before, when I was setting up a test environment, just put the device in, hook it up electrically, and we're rocking and rolling. Nowadays, I have to get not only the electrical and temperature, but uh, the um, physical alignment, physical matching of the uh, receivers uh, to work as well. And that calibration uh, is very critical for our measurements on, on, on matching tester to tester and repeatability and reproducibility in a manufacturing environment. So those are the challenges moving forward. You, you build these things in an anechoic chamber because now if anybody else walks by with a cell phone, you could be um, affecting the test that you're doing uh, in the tester itself. So it's got to be very, very contained, very isolated from any erroneous signals coming from the environment. Fun, exciting challenges, mostly on the, a lot of it on the handler side. On the instrument side as well, right, those challenges to build those, that equipment is coming and it's always a race of where is the chip relative to the instruments that are ready because sometimes those chips are going into the instrument. So it's a, it's a game from there. George Harris, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you for the time.